Women in Ireland earn 14% less than men, and only 26 out of 106 TDs are women. Across the world, women are more likely to be low paid, make less decisions, and carry the brunt of childcare and housework. The media promote the sexual objectification and commodification of women's bodies. So why is it that half the population are discriminated against and oppressed simply because of our gender? Some people say that there's a biological reason why men dominate, that it's just part of human nature. Socialists, on the other hand, argue that all oppression comes from a material basis. Karl Marx's collaborator, Friedrich Engels, presented a theory which linked women's oppression to the rise of class society. He argued that changes in the production process from an egalitarian hunter-gatherer society to a hierarchical agriculture society changed the relationship between men and women. Early human societies, or hunter-gatherer societies, relied on the cooperation between all members of the group in order to survive. There was a gender division of labour, however this was not strict. So most men did most of the hunting, while most women did most of the gathering. But sometimes women would hunt and sometimes men would gather. The responsibility of caring for children, the sick and the elderly was communal. Also, the labour of women was equally or sometimes more valued than that of men's. This meant that women were highly respected and regarded in these societies. They took part at each level of decision making and played a part in civic life. But as we settled and developed agriculture, several changes took place which changed this egalitarian relationship between men and women. Firstly, agriculture was much more productive than hunting and gathering. So for the first time in human history, we could produce more than we needed to survive. This surplus, gradually and over a long period of time, came under the control of a small group of people, mainly men. This new ruling class needed a way to pass down the control of the surplus and the surplus to the next generation. In the past, sexual relationships had been fairly free and flexible and your family or kin was passed down to you from your mother because she was the only parent that you could be actually certain of. Now there was a need for the men to know who their children were in order to pass down the control of the surplus to them. This led to the control of the sexual activity of women. Secondly, the use of the heavy plough in agriculture meant that it was very difficult for pregnant or breastfeeding women to take part in this type of labour. Thirdly, having settled down, it was much easier to look after a larger group of children and these children could now take part in lighter agricultural work. This led to a growth in population and to women spending more time being pregnant and breastfeeding. All these changes led to the removal of women from production, the control of the sexual activity of women and the separation of private and public, with women being forced into the private sphere of the home. This is what Friedrich Engels called the world historical defeat of the female sex. Throughout the 20th century, Marxist and feminist anthropologists set out to prove Engels' theory correct. They found substantial evidence to show the lack of gender hierarchy in pre-class societies. For example, in the islands of Tonga, they found that there was no word for husband or wife, only the ungendered word for spouse, oana. This means that there was no distinct social role for a wife or a distinct social role for a husband. Other examples of such societies are the Native Canadian and the Native American tribes. So the theory of Engels, which links the rise of class society with the rise of women's oppression, has been proven to be correct. Capitalism is also a class society and therefore we also have today the oppression of, of women. Marx and Engels believed that working class women would be forced into the factories and that this would begin to undermine the role of the family. Unfortunately, in the late 1800s, women were once again forced back into the home. The family still remains today as the main place of care for the elderly, for the children and for the sick. Though the form of the family has changed, the role of it still is to reproduce the next generation of workers. The family is the cheapest way to do this, with no cost to the state or to the capitalist. Secondly, capitalism promotes the sexual objectification and commodification of women's bodies. If you add to this the alienation or the lack of control that people feel under capitalism, 
Then you have a society where women are likely to face sexual and domestic abuse. If women's oppression arose from class society, then we also need to get rid of class society in order to actually liberate women. This means working class women and men joining together in a fighting organisation that will fight to dismantle capitalism.